G'day ice cream lovers, my name's Steve Christensen. Welcome back to Scoop School. Lately to have you here, got the whiteboard out. Mixed feelings on the whiteboard. Some people love it, some people hate it. Uh, but look, it's where the rubber meets the road when it comes to some of the theory that you need to put into place to run your ice cream shop effectively. We do want to thank our episode sponsor, which is Dippin' Flavors. Right here in town, Dippin' Flavors, they ship all over the country. Anything that goes into ice cream, so far as flavorings, anything that goes on top of ice creams, uh, particulates, candies, uh, fudge, all sorts of things, dippinflavors.com. The link is right down here below. Click on it. Tell them that Steve said hello when you talk to uh, Jimmy or Ryan or any of the crew there at Dippin. We thank them for their episode sponsorship. Now, this is the ideal way for you to do inventory. In Australia, we call it stock take. And it's interesting that we call it stock take considering that we come from a nation of convicts. We take stock. But, I mean, it can mean a number of different things doesn't necessarily mean we're taking stock. Anyway, uh, so this is what I call a price order sheet. Uh, and we've been using this kind of sheet in our stores for 20 odd years. Uh, and we've taught, you know, in school school classes, the process of how to order. And using a sheet like this actually helps a lot because of a number of different things. We'll touch on it in a minute. So you would have one of these sheets for each supplier that you have. So you might have one for the chocolate and candy company, you might have another one for your cups, spoons, napkins, your broadline distributor, you might have one for your mix, you might have one for other flavors. Uh, and they'll all primarily look the same. What you would like, well, what you should do is at the top you would have your supplier name. So whoever that supplier is and perhaps the phone number um, so you can contact them. So you've got your item here. So let's let's say uh, first off the rank here is a mini spoon. Okay, it's item number, let's say is one, two, three, and right now we're paying $7 a box. Again, understanding what each of these products cost you is extremely important. The description, uh, let's say uh, a box, there is 3,000 in a box, okay? Now, you'll have one of these sheets, as I said, for every supplier or every distributor that you have. So wherever we're getting these mini spoons from, we're probably getting our plates, cups, napkins, all sorts of things. You might have a lot of different things down here, different lines. What you'll want to do here is once you've got all of your inventory and your basically the bits and pieces that you get from this supplier, you'll want to have at the end of this sheet what we call a par number. I say par, you say par. It's also called a build two number, build two. And it's basically the number of these items that you should keep in inventory. So you talk to the supplier, uh, supplier and say, look, you know, as, as a general rule, how many of these boxes should I have in inventory? They might say, uh, keep four in inventory. So we're gonna write a four in here. So my par number or my build two number for my mini spoons is four. Now, this is every Monday. Let's say you're doing inventory every Monday. You generally do it when it's a quieter day, Monday or Tuesday. So this is Monday number one, Monday number two. Each of these lines is every week's order. So what you'll do here is have a look and each of these boxes have a slash through the middle. Uh, the top one is your inventory. The bottom one is your order. So what you're going to order. So for example, if I've got, and I'll just rub these out. So if I've got um, my bill to number is four and I go through my inventory or all of the things I have in stock on Monday and see that I have only one in inventory, I need to build to four. So my order number is three. If the next product I had built to number was 10 of them, I need to have 10 containers of this, and the, or, the inventory was seven, I would have to order three again. And again, if the next product I have, whatever it is, was seven, and I only have one in inventory, I need to order six. And you'll go basically down, and you'll basically go down the list 
all of the things that you order from this particular supplier, look at what the recommendation is, your PAR number, your bill to number, look at what you have in inventory, go through that process of calling them up and saying, hey, uh, supplier, I need one uh, of my mini spoons, I need seven plates, I need one, and go through that whole process. Now, there's a number of reasons why this is important to do, um, and I know a lot of people out in the food service industry, in a lot of businesses, do their inventory at the end of the month. At the end of the month, it's impossible for you to detect any kind of loss or any kind of abnormality in the, in the process of what you have and what you don't have. So I know as I go down each of these lines, the next Monday, the next Monday, the next Monday, I can see trends appearing as to why did we have four boxes of frozen cookies and then all of a sudden we went down to one and we don't go through a whole lot of cookies. Now, if that was happening at the end of the month, it would be very hard to kind of narrow down as to, well, who was working what shift and when did these items go missing? Uh, but if you do it weekly, um, the, uh, the, the process of kind of fine tuning or narrowing down on inventory that might be going missing or stolen or whatever, not being delivered correctly, uh, is really important. So. This is what we call a price order sheet. There's a, a, ch a chart at our Scoop School toolbox. If you go to scoopschool.online, uh, we have a toolbox there full of forms. It's one of them. Uh, or you can simply make it up yourself. It's relatively easy on an Excel spreadsheet. But the important thing is, make sure that you go by your supplier's recommendation as to what your build number should be. And you can tweak this. You might think that, well, he might say, hey, you need four of these. But you kind of think, well, I can, I'm once always sitting here, I'll, I'll narrow this back down to three. So my, my par on bill to number might be three. You might want to increase it depending on how busy you get. The nice thing is you're building to a number, you're doing this every week, you're looking for trends, you can see them much more regularly than you can at the end of the month, and it also helps you keep an idea of where the price is fluctuating. If the invoice shows up and it's now $7.20, Good to make a point of that. Plastic's going up, petroleum's going up. Maybe our food cost needs to be tweaked a little bit. So this allows you to be able to work with the numbers, looking at trends, looking at price influxions and so forth. Very, very important. Price order sheets, you should get one. Uh, info at, uh, I shouldn't say info, where am I going with that? Scoopschool.online at the toolbox has one or you can make up your own. Pretty simple, got another tip coming up for you so far as inventory is concerned. Uh, but you'll have to wait till tomorrow for that one. Again, if you have any questions, conundrums, problems with the ice cream business, we would love to help you. We've got a brand new website, scoopschool.com. We've got a community that meets live stream every week. Uh, we'd love for you to engage, love for you to come into the facility here and have a class. Love for you to join us on a live stream. It's all happening here at Scoop School. Keep on scooping and we'll see you in the next video.